before we know anything of a mind, a body or a world. We must first be present and aware. Thought tells us that the universe was here first, then the world, then the body, then the mind, and then finally awareness arrived. This is in complete contradiction to our experience. Our experience is that awareness this simple aware being that we essentially are was here first or more accurately is present now everything everything that anybody knows or has ever known of a mind a body or a world came after the simple fact of their being present and aware. In other words, it is our experience that awareness, our self, was here first. It is this awareness, this primary, original, ever-present and unlimited awareness that rises in the form of mind. Only as that mind can awareness know something called a body or a world? Our culture is founded upon the belief that a universe made out of stuff called matter was here first and that awareness or consciousness is a byproduct of that matter. In spite of the fact that this contradicts our actual experience. Awareness was here first. Awareness is present now. Everything that is known, everything that has ever been known, everything that could ever be known, is known by this awareness, through this awareness. And therefore, our knowledge of things, that is our knowledge of the mind, the body and the world, is only as good as our knowledge of awareness. If we think awareness is temporary and limited, our experience of the mind, the body and the world will appear in accordance with that belief. If we understand from our own direct, intimate experience that awareness is ever-present and without limits, then it will become clear to us that everything that appears in awareness, that is our entire experience, must also be made out of that ever-present, unlimited awareness. In other words, that all apparently finite things must be made out of infinite awareness alone. First there is consciousness and think of it in terms of the three states of deep sleep, dreaming and waking. Remember we had these, 
these three elements, consciousness, mind, matter. In the conventional point of view, it's matter, mind, consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now, from the conventional point of view, the, the point of view that says there is matter, mind, consciousness, the waking state is considered to be the most real state. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And the waking state corresponds to matter because the waking state is made out of stuff called objects. So the biggest state, the, the primary state, is the waking state. When we fall asleep, we go out of the waking state and we lose contact with matter. It's just made out of mind. And in deep sleep, which is considered to be, the mo from the conventional point of view, the most unreal of all our experiences, the waking state is the most real, Mm -hmm. dreams is pretty unreal and deep sleep is completely unreal there's nothing mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. this corresponds to this tiny little spark of consciousness in the middle of the mind now from, from the point of view of our experience it's the other way round mm. consciousness is the biggest world inside that mind takes place inside that the body and the world take place so consciousness corresponds to deep sleep mm -hmm. mm. yes yeah? Yes. Deep sleep is the most real state. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it is just it's just pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now, from this point of view, deep sleep doesn't come to an end when the dream state begins. It's that deep sleep itself, pure consciousness, vibrates within itself and takes the shape of mind and appears as the dream state. Yes, yeah, so pure consciousness takes the shape of mind, thinking, sensing, and perceiving. That, that is just mind. That corresponds to the dream state, which takes place <coughs> in deep sleep, not after deep sleep. You haven't gone from one state to another state. You have remained pure consciousness. Pure consciousness by itself corresponds to deep sleep. Consciousness starts vibrating within itself. It begins to take form, thinking, sensing, and perceiving, and appears as the dream. And then in the form of thought, it conceptualizes separate objects. And those separate objects become the waking state. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, the waking state is the most unreal state. In other words, the state in which we, are th in which we think there are separate objects made out of matter, known by a separate subject ma made out of stuff called mind, is the least real state. Mm -hmm. And this is why it says in the Bhagavad Gita, what is f the waking state for the ignorant is sleep for mm. the sage. Mm. And what is sleep for the ignorant is waking or daytime for the sage. The sage means pure consciousness. So, with this completely new model of our experience, which is simply a model that is based on what we actually experience, we are using a hint. And the hint is the three states. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's just a coincidence that there happen to be three states? <coughs> a waking state made out of objects, mm -hmm. sorry, made out, a waking state consisting of objects made out of matter, a dream state consisting of mind and deep sleep consisting of just being, just mm -hmm. consciousness. Is that, an, is that just a, a coincidence? Mm -hmm. see Matter, more. mind, consciousness. Mm -hmm. We rehearse this every single day of our lives. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's such a clue there as to the nature of reality. It, it's a clue that we, 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 we rehearse this death process Mm -hmm. Every, every single day. Well, wh what I see you're doing is you're making deep sleep central, and yes. the waking state. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that deep sleep is the most real experience, mm -hmm. and the waking state. It's not that the waking state is unreal. Every, mm -hmm. All experience is equally real, but it's it's the way thought conceptualizes the waking state to consist of objects made out of matter mm -hmm. moving around in time and space. That is the least real. Right. So I'm completely turning experience upside down and basing it on our experience, which is that consciousness is primary. Right. 
So mind is secondary, matter is tertiary. The conventional view is that matter is primary, mind is a byproduct of matter, secondary, and consciousness is a byproduct of mind, tertiary. Then you go to the hint of the three states of waking dream, and you understand I don't, I don't go out of the waking state into the dream state, and then out of the dream state into deep sleep. Mm. I am always in deep sleep, mm. which I- I- is not a state, and therefore we have to say it is actually beyond right. deep sleep to rear because it is no longer, it's not a state. But l- l- let's leave that for the moment. It, it, it's making pure consciousness the, the biggest element, which is represented by deep sleep. Mm. Mind takes place in consciousness. Matter takes place in mind. I don't go out of the waking state into the dream state and then out of the dream state into deep sleep. Mm. I am always in deep sleep. Mm. Most, because most of us have identified I awareness with thought and perception. We think what I am is a collection of thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions. We think that when thoughts and perceptions disappear, I awareness disappears. Therefore we presume that I awareness disappears in deep sleep. We think that the world remains, but that I awareness disappears. Whereas in fact our experience, that is awareness's experience, is the opposite. Awareness's experience is that I remain and the body-mind world disappears. That's your experience. What is it in between two thoughts? What is present? There is a discontinuity between two thoughts, yes? But nevertheless, experience is one smooth, continuous flow. So although thoughts are appearing and disappearing all the time, there is something that remains continuous throughout the presence of numerous thoughts. Yeah? What is that? Awareness. Yeah. So what is it that is present between two thoughts? Awareness. What is it that is present between two dreaming states, which is just two thoughts or two images? Yeah. Awareness again. That's deep sleep. The space between two thoughts. But the space between two thoughts doesn't have any duration because time only appears to exist from the point of view of the mind or thought. So just as the gap between two thoughts is a, is a gap that has no duration, so deep sleep has no duration. That's why deep sleep never seems to take any time. Is it not your experience that you fall asleep and wake up at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, it's because this duration of deep sleep, which thought or the waking state mind says took six hours, doesn't actually take six hours. It doesn't take place in time. It takes place in awareness. In fact, it doesn't take place in awareness. It is awareness. And awareness has no duration. It's not in time. It's eternal or ever-present. It's impossible to ask, to satisfactorily answer the question about deep sleep if we take the waking state mind's point of view of reality. Your question, the difficulty you you are having or you were having was because you believe that the waking state mind's version of reality is absolutely true. And the strange experience of deep sleep doesn't really fit into the waking state mind's model of reality. It's a kind of anomaly. But if we see that the waking state mind is a very partial view of reality, if we take consciousness's view of reality, if we start with consciousness rather than the waking state mind, and we explore experience from the point of view of consciousness, then the, the, the three, it's like the three states of waking, dreaming, and deep sleep are like um, the waking state is like the 10 o'clock news. Um, the, the dream state is like a, a drama, 
and the deep sleep state is when there's no film or news playing on your screen. But from the point of view of the screen, the screen doesn't go through any state when it passes from the news to the drama, and for the drama, when you turn the TV off. The screen is always in the same state. It doesn't pass through any state. There are no states for consciousness. There are only states of mind. And mind is a modulation of consciousness, a play of consciousness. So from the point of view of mind, there are three states of waking, dreaming, and sleeping. But from the point of view of consciousness, which is the only real point of view, because consciousness is all there is to experience, it, it, it is always in the same condition, just like your screen. Your TV screen is always in the same condition, whether the news is playing or the drama is playing, or whether no, nothing is playing on it. It's always in the same condition. Nothing ever happens to the screen. Nothing ever happens to consciousness. It never goes anywhere. It never passes through any state. It never becomes anything other than itself. It seems to be mixed with the qualities of experience. But it never actually acquires those qualities. It is just temporarily mixed with thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions and as a result seems to acquire a temporary name and form or a limit just as the screen seems to acquire a limit when the movie begins. But in fact, it never, the screen never acquires a limit. It's always in the same condition. Our consciousness is like that. It's always in the same place, the same placeless place, the same pristine condition. The states flow through consciousness. Consciousness doesn't flow through the, the three states of waking, dreaming, and sleeping. It doesn't pass through any states. The states pass through it. In fact, that's not even right. They don't pass through it like one person might pass through this room. The movie doesn't pass through the screen. It is just a modulation of the screen. Oh, one kind of, one sort of appearance makes consciousness look like the waking state. Another kind of modulation makes consciousness look like the dream state. And another kind of modulation makes consciousness look like a, a blank, empty state. Those are the three states of waking, dreaming and sleeping. But they're all plays on and of consciousness, which never itself goes through any state. Question about um, the uh, the dream state and the uh, waking state. So I guess m in my experience of contemplating different things and sort of deconstructing models and overlays and all of that, it seems though that um, the waking state almost becomes more dreamlike as the sort of objectness starts to fall away. Yes. And something that I've been noticing is that like, um, it's, a, it's a sort of a funny, sort of peculiar thing, and it's not totally peculiar, but um, I question sometimes, is this a dream? Um, sometimes my dreams are becoming, they seem to be sometimes more vivid than they used to be, and detailed. And then something might happen during the day, and then I'm thinking, was that, you, do you know what I'm saying? It's almost like the yes. the the waking state is becoming more dreamlike, and the dream state is becoming yes. more vivid. And yes, it, it's this, this is what it means in the Bhagavad Gita when it says that what is what is a daytime for the ignorant is nighttime for the sage. Daytime for the sage is nighttime for the ignorant. Yes, it, it's what is meant by that is what, what is daytime or the waking state. From the conventional point of view, the waking state consists mainly of objects made out of matter. And objects are considered 
from the conventional point of view in the waking state to be the most real aspect of experience. When, in fact, the very word real or reality comes from the Latin word meaning, the Latin word res, meaning a thing. Mm -hmm. Betraying our belief that it is the extent to which something is a thing that it is real. And the extent to which it, something departs from being a thing, it becomes correspondingly less real. So when somebody says to you, oh, come on, get real, they, they, they mean, come out of your thoughts and feelings and come down to earth, you know, de deal with things that are, are really real, but, yeah, which means objects made of matter. They're considered to be more real than thoughts and feelings. And thoughts and feelings are in turn considered to be more real than consciousness, which, if it's considered at all, is considered to be the most effervescent, trivial, unimportant aspect of experience. That's the conventional point of view. However, if we explore our experience, consciousness is the most important element of experience. It is the only element of experience that we cannot do without. It is the most substantial element of experience because it's the only element of experience that never disappears and that can't be destroyed. So from this point of view, from the point of view of consciousness, the waking state is, as Rumi said, a kind of ignorance. That's what he meant, knowledge of the world mm -hmm. is a kind of ignorance. He doesn't mean that experience, it's not a, it's not a, he's not rejecting experience, but he's rejecting experience as it is conceived by the waking state mind as a multiplicity and diversity of objects made out of dead inert stuff called matter. That kind of a world is ignorance or is an illusion. But, but experience itself made of consciousness is absolutely real. So in that sense, yes, the, 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 what we once considered to be real, objects made of matter, become less and less and less real. And correspondingly, what we once considered to be completely unreal, to the extent that we didn't even think about it at all, consciousness, is now realized to be the sole reality of experience. So consciousness and matter change place. It and seems as though it's not so clearly defined anymore, the, the dream state and the wake, waking state. Yes. I mean, experience is yes. experience. The, the, yes, the, 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 the distinction, I mean, how do we know now? Exactly. that we're not in a kind of dream state. Exactly, that Actually, I ask myself that question. We don't, we don't know. Yeah. We do not know. Yeah. So then because you're... As, you're, as you're implying, when we're dreaming, the dream, from the point of view of the dream, has exactly the same Absolutely. quality of reality as does the waking state yeah. from the point of view of the waking state. Exactly. And it's true that both the waking state and the dream state are equally real. But the reality of the waking state is not made out of matter. And the reality of the dream state is not made out of mind. The reality of both states are made out of consciousness. It is consciousness that gives the dream and the waking states their reality. When we have a dream at night, the three-dimensional world disappears. And the, in other words, the dream doesn't take place in space. It just takes place in time. In other words, the dream has only one dimension to it. Yeah, it takes place in time, but it can't be found in space. And yet, in this one dimension, a three-dimensional world appears. How amazing is that? That when we dream of a three-dimensional world, we could, for instance, we could have a dream that is identical to this image that we're seeing now. In other words, a three-dimensional world. But it appears in a one-dimensional dream. Just that. I mean, 
we're not talking non-duality here. We're just talking about a familiar experience that we all have every night. That a three-dimensional world appears in one-dimensional time. So is it such a big step to go from there to the possibility that awareness has no dimensions but the four-dimensional world of time and space appear inside it. Is it such a big leap? After all, isn't it almost similar to what's happening in the dream state? It's not so strange. We all dream every night. We all have the experience every night that a three-dimensional world appears absolutely real in a one-dimensional experience, time. All that's being suggested here is just to take one more step. Consciousness, which has no dimensions, this th four-dimensional world of three of space, three dimensions of space and one of time, all take place in this zero-dimensional consciousness. It's not such a big step to make. I know, and it changes everything. And it changes everything. It's not so far-fetched. It's the, the fact that we dream every night. We're almost there. <laughs> it's, not, it's not such a radical idea. We're experiencing it every night. The possibility of one dimensions one dimension to appear as something else, to appear as three dimensions. If that principle is established and experienced by everybody every day, could it not be that in reality four dimensions appears out of a zero dimensional space? After all, what we've done is we've gone from the waking state to the dream state, yes? to make this, I'm suggesting go one step further. What about we go into deep sleep? Yeah? In deep sleep, no dimensions, no time, no space. But deep sleep, in other words, just prior to the mind, it's present all the time underneath the other experiences. It's prior to the waking and the dreaming state. And the waking and the dreaming state arise out of it. So we don't even have to go to some extraordinary non-dual. We, we go from the waking state to the dream state and say, yes, in the dream state, the three-dimensional world appears in a one-dimensional. Just take one step further into the zero-dimensional space of deep sleep and see that all of this arises out of it. It's not so strange. We experience it, we rehearse it every day. We just fail to see the implications of these three states. As we, as our understanding deepens, the, the sharp distinction between the dream state and the waking state begins to blur. Because the dream state is a series of images in consciousness. Well, what's the waking state? Images in consciousness. A series of images, sensations and perceptions in consciousness. It's, as we take the point of view of consciousness more and more and more, these two states, uh, the difference between them blurs. It's only when we're firmly rooted in the apparent reality of the waking state that the dream state seems to be so different. Right. And indeed, the deep sleep state. So from the point of view of the waking state, there are three very distinct states. As we, as it were, abide, as we sink back, and stand more and more as the presence of awareness. The, the reality that we previously attributed to the waking state, we now realize belongs to awareness. And therefore, as a result of this, the, 
the waking state and the dream states become more and more similar. Thoughts, mm -hmm. sensations and perceptions in awareness. So the 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 thingness of the waking state loses its apparent reality. It becomes less objectively real as we realize its reality belongs to the subject, consciousness. And as the the somethingness of the waking state loses its reality, so the nothingness of the deep sleep state loses its corresponding reality. So, the, in fact, the apparent somethingness of the waking state is mirrored by the apparent nothingness of deep sleep. And as the, the thingness of things in the waking state dissolves, so correspondingly that the nothingness of the nothing of deep sleep dissolves. And both, in fact, all three states are revealed equally to be simply consciousness shining. The lines between the three states begin to get a little more, they begin to get blurred, they're not so clearly distinct. I don't go out of the waking state into the dream state and then out of the dream state into deep sleep. Mm. I am always in deep sleep. You say there are no halos around the streetlights in Paris and that what I see is an aberration caused by old age an affliction I tell you it has taken me all my life to arrive at the vision of gas lamps as angels to soften and blur and finally banish the edges you regret I don't see to learn that the line I call the horizon does not exist and sky and water so long apart are the same state of being. Fifty-four years before I could see Rouen Cathedral is built of parallel shafts of sun and now you want to restore my youthful errors, fixed notions of top and bottom, the illusion of three-dimensional space Wisteria separate from the bridge it covers. What can I say to convince you the Houses of Parliament dissolve night after night to become the fluid dream of the Thames? I will not return to a universe of objects that don't know each other, as if islands were not the lost children of one great continent. The world is flux, and light becomes what it touches becomes water, lilies on water, above and below water, becomes lilac and mauve and yellow and white, and cerulean lamps, small fists passing sunlight so quickly to one another that it would take long streaming hair inside my brush to catch it, to paint the speed of light. Our weighted shapes, these verticals, burn to mix with air and change our bones, skin, clothes to gases. If only you could see how heaven pulls earth into its arms and how infinitely the heart expands to claim this world, blue vapor without end. <laughs>